All right, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at AI Summit in New York, and I'm super excited to be with Thomas from Vespa. Thomas, welcome to the Robert Show. Thanks a lot, Rohit. I'm excited to be here with you. Uh, I'm excited to chat as well. I've been seeing a lot of things that are coming from Vespa and the great things that you all are doing. Uh, we're going to go much more deeper into it, but uh, just for our audience, would you like to introduce yourself? Tell us more about what you do at Vespa. Yeah. So my name is Thomas. I'm a software uh, engineer at nice. Vespa AI. Uh, I am. Uh, I haven't been there for so long. I started this April, so nice. like nine, ten months. Uh, been working as an AI data science consultant for uh, a few years, uh, many years before that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, at Vespa, we uh, we. Uh, develop an uh, open source uh, search engine. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, that's basically in one sentence what we do. It's a, it's a, lot, uh, it's a lot more to it, but we can go deeper uh, as we go along. Okay, I also heard there's this exciting news that uh, out of so many demos, your demo was one of the selected demos at um, you know the this event uh, can you tell us more about it why was it outstanding why did you think it got selected yeah so uh, we uh, the last couple of months we have uh, made and published this demo which uh, is a demo of visual rag uh, so you guys are probably familiar with rag like a retrieval augmented generation where you retrieve a bunch of uh, documents and mm -hmm. feed it to a, a large language model yep. and you have it generate some answer. Okay. Uh, so the difference with visual rag, that is that you can actually use the uh, contextual visual embeddings of an image rather than pure text. Yep. And, and for a lot of documents, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. You can think of uh, typical uh, infographics, or uh, scientific papers yep. that has a lot of drawings, charts, diagrams, tables. And when you try to parse that into plain text, you lose a lot of the information and the context. Yep. Right. And uh, yeah, so that's uh, the demo that we uh, that we published that uh, and uh, that I also will be demonstrating here. Yeah. That one demonstrates exactly that that you can actually search and find uh, documents based on the visual context, be it uh, charts, diagrams, or even plain uh, images. That's fantastic. That's a good explanation there. Thanks for that. Uh, I'm kind of also curious to learn a little about, uh, you know, more into the challenges as well. What are those common mistakes that you kind of see uh, when, you know, working in RAG uh, solutions? Anything that you would like to share with our audience? Because you might have like a deeper insight as a software engineer, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I have developed a, uh, a couple of RAG applications uh, myself before I started in Vespa as well, so I know a bit about the pains. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, very often the, the culprit to good performance very often lies in the data ingestion pipeline. Right. So that is, you, you have your documents, mm -hmm. but then, okay, what do you do? How do you process them before you make them searchable? And that one relates back to what I said earlier, that if you do uh, like OCR, uh, optical character rec recognition, or just try to extract the text, a lot of the, a lot of the information will uh, not be uh, there in the documents. And if there, it's, the information is not there, you're definitely not able to to uh, use it for generating meaningful answers. Mm -hmm. And uh, since we are on this topic, I would also love to see a little bit and uh, give a you know a good show and tell to our audience as well. So mm -hmm. can you give us a quick demo of how it all works and uh, take us more into the in-depth uh, you know understanding of how it all works? Yeah. So if we we use this uh, demo as a as a starting point, so what right. we did here, we had to do some indexing, right? But rather than trying to extract the text only from the images, so uh, the basis, the data set here we used here was uh, like uh, public reports from the Norwegian government pension fund, so uh, PDF pages, where a lot of the pages were charts, diagrams, and so on. So that, that is stuff that you would uh, typically have uh, difficulty 
with uh, extracting the tech stuff in a meaningful way. Right. Yeah, so that's what they did first. We indexed that one into Vespa. Nice. Uh, and the application uh, shows that you can uh, you can search. It's basically it's a standard search interface, right? With a mm -hmm. text box that you, uh, you uh, search with a query or a question, and you hit uh, search, and then you will retrieve the most relevant results. But the difference here between uh, common... Uh, text uh, retrieval is that we actually we use a vision vision language model uh, which is called call pally yep uh, to generate the embeddings of each image uh, while indexing and we do the same for the query so the the query will also have a set of vectors right and then we do approximate nearest neighbor matching between uh, the query embeddings and the indexed documents. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, something that works a lot better for these type of documents. And we can get the better performance and uh, retrieve the most relevant results more often. Yeah. I there's, think. There's, uh, yeah. Sorry Go to ahead, interrupt please. you, but there is one important thing as well that I think, uh, that I think uh, we should uh, try to emphasize here. And that is that you actually. Uh, for these images, you actually generate uh, a vector for each small patch. It's not like a pixel, but it's like a, a square of pixels. So for each image, you actually have uh, 1,028 vectors. Mm -hmm. That means when you have a query, you can generate a similarity map. So based on which patches of the image are actually most relevant and most similar to your query. Yep. And that means, again, that you're able to get explainable search yep. so that you can see, actually, uh, for each token. If I ask, uh, who is Ravit? And then you can click Ravit, and if there's, uh, yeah, say, maybe if uh, the large language model is familiar with Ravit and has been trained on some images of you, then you will actually see that the part with your face would be highlighted. Okay, that's, that's fantastic. Interesting. Yeah, exactly. That's something, you know, obviously like a game changer when it comes to, you know, these kind of solutions. So I'm kind of also uh, curious since we are, you know, around the corner of 2025 and um, uh, next year is going to be super interesting as well. Uh, uh, so where do you see the future of RAG? Uh, what's, what's exciting? What directions do you see and what directions are the most important uh, in the future? Yeah, so there are a couple of things here. I think uh, what we uh, have demoed here with the uh, visual or document retrieval, yep. that will uh, obviously be something. We see that uh, the, it, uh, they uh, release new models every yep. week. Yep. They get better, they get smaller, so they get more efficient, right? Yep. So that's one thing. Uh, another thing that I think uh, is starting to get a lot of traction in the RAG community it is uh, agen agentic rag or yep yeah so yep. that you you actually You're need right. some steps right before you don't have just one query and then answer it based on one documents maybe you have some right. steps that try to uh, decompose the query maybe you have to ask uh, several different questions to answer it right uh, maybe it tries to uh, uh, get the, their results back and then if the results are not satisfactory you have to uh, maybe uh, iterate on your query again yeah. so that you have these agents that uh, tries to optimize the rag for you mm, right? that's awesome I think uh, those are fantastic insights that you've kind of shared and uh, definitely future looks uh, very interesting and uh, we've been in this you know obviously in the last few years we've seen AI growing, RAG uh, becoming such an important part of AI, and uh, agentic RAG as well now. Uh, so I'm excited to see what's next. But uh, one last question that I have for you, Thomas, is if folks want to reach out to you, learn more about uh, Vespa, RAG, uh, agentic RAG, um, where can they do that? Um, and also if they want to just follow you on social media, which is the best place? Yeah. Yeah, so for uh, Vespa, uh, we have a homepage and we have a blog that is 
Uh, we have a lot of content on the blog. Nice. Uh, so there's a mix between uh, technical and business directed uh, nice. content. A lot of, uh, we have a chief scientist, Joe Bergham, which is almost like uh, an uh, influencer, I think. He's got a lot of followers on X. Very cool. So he puts a lot, out a lot of content. Uh, and we have a Slack community. Very so cool. uh, I think there, there's a lot of members there and we get a lot of questions daily for people that uh, are curious about stuff, uh, wants to learn both about Vespa, RAG, vector search, whatever. Amazing. Uh, yeah, so that's it uh, for me on social media. I'm uh, Thomas uh, underscore Thorsen at uh, X and uh, also my name on, on LinkedIn. Awesome. This is such a great uh, conversation and thanks for sharing all the great insights, Thomas. Uh, we'll keep the conversation going. We'll keep learning. I'll share the links with our audience so they can follow and learn more. Uh, but thanks once again for visiting The Ravit Show. Thanks, Ravit. Thank you nice very talking much. to you. Thank you, everyone.